Okay, so I still have no intro. Hi, I'm Certified Moth. But after this video is done, if I have enough free time, I will hopefully eventually have one because today I am finally getting around to designing my persona. Pretty exciting. This is the third time I've recorded this audio. Both times it was crunchy and messed up and horrible. And I ended up finding out it was because my editing software like messes up my audio if I try to play the video I'm editing while I'm recording audio on a different software, if that makes sense. I don't really understand it. Anyways, I started off with sketching out some ideas for my persona. I sort of already had some in mind. I've done a little bit of work in my sketchbook. But the big thing I was trying to decide was, well, style and then outfit. I was playing around with different styles, like some more cartoony, chibi, but I ended up going with a semi-realism because that's just my normal style and it's definitely what I'm more comfortable and confident in. I really like when people can do simplistic personas. I personally really struggle to make them work for me, especially for thumbnails and stuff. But the thing is, one of my earliest inspirations was Lavender Town for my art. Like, in grade 7, I was obsessed with her. I would just copy her style. And my style for a while was very cartoony, and she's actually the reason that I went to the art school I'm at now. Which is kind of fun, even though my style is so different now from the inspiration I used to take from her. And, you know, you think because I started off my art with copying a cartoony style that I'd be better at it than I am, but I'm really not. It's a struggle. It is... I don't know, I can't explain it. Anyways, I was trying to add a lot of, like, moth aspects to this design to match my username. Is that what it's called on YouTube? I actually don't really know. But... At first I was going with like some more obvious inspirations, then I ended up settling for some less clear ones where it's like, they're not clear, it's just like a design on the clothing or on the fabric instead of actual moth elements like wings. The main reason I was working on a persona design, well first of all it's for the sake of an intro, just to have something at the beginning of my video so it's not such a stark start to it, and then also just to make making profile pictures easier in the future. The big reason is because I want to eventually do a Meet the Artist for the New Year's, actually, I want to do it. Because in the New Year's, so New Year's is a Monday, which is the day I upload, so I figured that'll be my New Year's update, or upload. I am also planning on maybe making a Christmas video. It won't actually go up on Christmas, which is also a Monday, because I feel like making a Christmas video and uploading it on Christmas, it's only one day people are going to watch it. Whereas if I do want to upload it a week early, at least there's a week where people are willing to watch it. Although, I kind of feel like I'm already past the point where I can do that. I don't know. And then, I'm also having like an upcoming video sketchbook tour sometime in January. I'm a bit over halfway through one of my sketchbooks right now, so I'll probably finish it in like late December, early January-ish. And I know people liked my old sketchbook tour, but I'm trying to save that one for when I'm going to be super busy, maybe at the end of the semester. I mean, it really depends on my workload this semester, because this last, like, winter, not winter, fall semester was really easy in terms of workload. It wasn't too much of a struggle. I don't really know what winter semester is going to be like for me, so it's really just going to depend on that on the next time one of those videos comes out. So anyways, back to the drawing. So one of the things I was working on was clothing designs. The number one thing I think I struggle with is clothing designs because when I was younger I wasn't super into fantasy stuff or any of the stuff with like really intricate designs. A lot of the stuff I used to draw would just be in like t-shirts or a sweater maybe. So I never really picked up on that sort of complex design or you know, just like that really detailed stuff and now I'm trying to teach myself it now and it's kind of a struggle. It's not super easy to get into the flow of something like that. I don't know, it's like, once you get set in your ways, it's really hard to switch out of it again. Lately I've really been going into a phase where I've been loving drawing self-portraits a lot. Almost all my painting assignments the past semester have been self-portraits, and it sort of felt right to have a set persona design for like doodling in my sketchbook and stuff, and in case I can use it for any future projects, like next semester, just so I'm not having to like design a persona from scratch for an assignment, just to have something I already like. And, oh, at this point of the video, I am working on colors. Very fun. I had so much fun with these colors. Really bright and fun. 
because a lot of my personal work lately has been in pen and pencil because with all the school stuff, my personal work has just been sketchbook stuff and I don't really like color I don't really like to color in my sketchbook just because especially the current sketchbook I have, it doesn't really take watercolor. I never feel like getting out my paints. I hate covering up the bleed through from alcohol markers. And even just water-based markers bleed through the paper, which is kind of disappointing, kind of annoying. Anyways, now that I'm having more time for my personal art, I'm having a lot more time to work on that sort of stuff and working with colors again, so I've been having a lot of fun with that, which I think is part of the reason I went so saturated with this, at least compared to some of the stuff I do. One of the big things I was trying to do with the design for this persona was just to make the clothing really comfortable and chill. That's why I ended up giving socks to all the designs instead of shoes. Definitely not because I hate drawing shoes. Definitely not. <laughs> but um, just overall, like the baggy look. I just wanted to make it look cozy because I actually get quite a few comments about the vibe of my videos being chill and calm and that makes me so happy. It's not really intentional. I think I'm just a kind of a chill person. But I'm really happy that people enjoy watching my videos, especially for like stuff in the background. That's mostly the kind of art videos I watch. I really like to watch stuff while I'm sketching and drawing. So I'm happy that my art can be like that to other people. And on the topic of intention, when I started this YouTube channel, I really had no intentions for videos besides sketchbook tours. Like I obviously meant to eventually make videos that weren't sketchbook tours but I just didn't plan any of them. And now looking back on it, it's like, why would I do that? Cause now I'm struggling like every single week, trying to come up with a new idea. It's kind of a struggle. I'm trying to compile a list. So if anyone has any ideas, they are fully welcome. I mean, I'm always looking for ideas and what people want to see. And at this point in the drawing process, I was working with a line art brush that is definitely meant to be used larger and less like I don't really know how much of a lineup brush is. it is. It might be more of like a sketching brush, but I was really struggling with it. It was hard to get small details. So I ended up restarting and with a new brush and just immediately it was working so much better. The outcome was so much better. And like, just thinking about that trend that was a little while ago where try drawing the same image in like different, with different brushes and see how it changes just based on the brush. I feel like that'd be a fun video to do. I know the trend is kind of dead, but doing like a more speed paint, longer video of it, I feel like that'd be really fun to do. Cause it really is like a, a strange change with just between what brush you're using at the time. And just to change the topic a little bit, I wanna talk about sort of my goals for my channel. I haven't really talked about it before. It feels kind of weird to talk about how you hope your channel to succeed. Like, I don't know, to me that feels kind of weird, but I, it shouldn't be. But anyways, so my overall goal for this channel is just to hopefully have it grow enough to help support me once I'm done with school and have to start my career because trying to do a career in art, I'm stressed about it. I don't know how I'm going to make it work, especially because I'm a fine art student, not a design student. So there's not really many corporate jobs for me. I mean, that's why I was a fine art student. I don't want to do corporate jobs, but at the same time, just going out to the world, into the world and doing art and not having like a job, I don't know how I'm gonna manage that. And I really don't wanna have to work a non-art job just to support myself. So I would like, just my main goal for this channel is to hopefully be able to support myself. I mean, it would be absolutely crazy and wonderful if one day this could be my job. I don't wanna be that hopeful about it. I know it's like, it's hard to make work. So I'm trying to keep my expectations low, but my hopes high. <laughs> But I genuinely really, really appreciate how kind everyone has been to me on here. Every single comment and like and subscription I get genuinely so amazing. I'm so happy that people actually enjoy watching my content, that they think what I make is worthwhile. And I'm actually almost at 150 subs right now, which is super exciting. I mean, I feel like I just hit 100 not too long ago, so this is exciting. I mean, I know for some people, another 50 subs isn't a big deal, but for me, like, that's a lot. That's like, that's crazy. <laughs> and also a few of my videos broke 1k views. I think one of them might even bro have broken 2k. I would have to check. It might have been one of my sketchbook tours, but that is just super exciting for me. I really like, I was always hoping my videos would do okay, but I was never actually thinking I'd get like 
a thousand people who are interested in seeing what I have to draw and say, like, what? That's crazy to me. <laughs> but anyways, back to the topic of what I'm drawing in this video. Um, I had so much fun with the coloring on this. I was using uh, an oil paintbrush, which has just been so fun. Like, I'm really enjoying adding some painterly aspects back into my digital art because I've done a lot of traditional painting lately. I'm actually planning on majoring in painting next year. So instead of trying to like fit myself into this stereotype of what I feel like I should be doing with digital art, of doing like clean line art, being able to use the bucket tool, having these clean colors, doing like cell shading, making use of layers and stuff, I've been having more fun working on it in a sort of similar way I would with digital or traditional painting. And I feel like it just feels like more like my art. It matches my style because that's just the way my brain works. My brain has learned to work in terms of traditional painting and shading. And so I've just had a lot more fun trying to do it in this way rather than trying to fit myself into how I feel like I should be doing digital art, if that makes sense. At this point in the process, I was working on the hair. I did this kind of warm brown. I had actually a hard time deciding if I should go with my natural hair color or what it actually looks like. Because right now I have the fade out from dyeing my hair purple. It's basically back to a brownish color. It's just warmer and darker than my hair actually is. My hair is normally like a very light brown or a dark blonde, not super warm. But just, I don't know, it worked better with the colors. I feel like to have it warm, but honestly, I don't even know. I feel like I really struggle with color theory still. Like we did a bit of it in my painting class, but I'm not in like any of the design classes where they focus on the right way to do color palettes because that very much is like in design drawing and the, the, the design classes in general, you learn the right way to do things because you're gonna be working for clients and having a job and doing graphic design. Whereas with fine art, it's a lot more of like doing your own thing, you're deciding everything. So it's not as important to know the right way to do stuff like colors. But at the same time, it's kind of hard. Like, it, I can genuinely think, generally figure out what will look good together, but there's a part of me that wishes I had a better grasp on color theory, and I'm sure I'll end up getting more of it later in later years of classes. It's just, yeah, you know. I don't know, changing the subject back to the, pa or the painterly style I did the shading in, I love the way the shirt looks. I usually really struggle with fabric, especially in digital art, but because I made it so subtle and because it was a bit more of a textured look to the shading, I feel like it worked a lot better than it usually does, which is just, it's always fun to find a method that makes things look more like you want it to. Like maybe it's not super realistic shading, but I feel like it matches the overall vibe of my art, like the soft, smooth, but still with brush marks and stuff. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I'm not really sure if all my thumbnails are going to be restricted to this specific color palette for all of it, because then I feel like I'm restricted to only doing my thumbnails in certain colors, which maybe that'd be fun to have a color theme for my thumbnails this year, but I don't know, I don't want to hold myself super strongly to one thing, so I feel like these color palettes are mostly going to be for like sprites, for sketchbook work, for and for like my intro and stuff and just for like, you know, general drawing purposes. This is a color palette I genuinely really like, so I don't really mind working with it. I just don't want to restrict myself. But yeah, that was the video. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to watch my silly little videos. Um, I really appreciate any support I get, any likes, comments, subscriptions. If you liked it, I would appreciate it, but no pressure, you know. But thank you so much anyways. Um, bye.